Welcome to our P6 video tutorial series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at all the different ways that we can tie logic within P6. So looking at the screen that we have here, we have 10 activities that have been added in, but notice by our numbers that we do not have these in sequential order. So in those cases where you need to link activities and tie logic, but they're not in order, what we can utilize is our control key. So starting with the number one and then holding down the control button, I'm gonna select two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. The order in which you select it is remembered by P6 and it will link those activities in that order. So after selecting our activities, right click and we're going to click on link activities and we can turn on the relationship lines right here so we can see that we now have a relationship between each of these activities. To schedule the file, we can press F9 or click on this little icon at the top and then select schedule. And so notice we see that we have our activities that are linked, but they kind of look like they're all over the place. This is because of the way that they're sorted. So if we were to go to this column right here, this start column, and then sort our activities based on the start date, then we'll see this waterfall effect on the activities. In order to look at the next method, we need to break the logic that we just tied. To do this, we can select, hold shift, and then select the bottom. And then over on the right hand side, we'll click on this predecessors. And we'll start at the top, select, grab the bottom, and then we'll click on the red X. We'll select yes. And so what we see in our Gantt chart is that those relationships have been removed. So for the next one, let's sort based on activity name and see that it puts some of these in order. And then uh, number 10 is out of order. So what we can do, we're gonna use two different methods to link all of this together. Um, sequentially, we could start with two and then we could link all the way down through nine. So to do that, we can just make sure that we have two highlighted, hold down the shift key and then select nine at the bottom. Again, right click and then we will link activities. And so we see two through nine have been linked. So then we can press F9 or click on this icon and then schedule it. So notice that we have one and 10 up here that have not been um, linked yet. So our other method that we can use, um, it's not as common, but um, it's still a way to link activities within the schedule is that we can actually use um, the arrows within the Gantt chart to link these activities. So what I'm going to do is sort this based on our start date. And so what we need to do is we want to link activity one to activity two. So this is saying whenever we finish with activity one, then we want to begin activity two. So at the end of activity one, notice we have this little arrow that shows up. If we click and then drag, to the front of activity two, we see this little pop-up that says finish one before starting two. And so we can just release. And so now we have these linked right here. And then to link the other one that we have, we need to take nine and scroll over here Oops, a little too far. Once we finish nine, we want to start 10. So we see that box right there. Finish nine before starting 10, we can release. And so again, we can hit F9 to schedule or select the icon at the top. And so again, we see that we have all of our activities going in sequential order. We can sort by start 
again to give us that nice waterfall effect. And then finally, the last method that we have, again, we have to break these logic ties. So we highlight these, we go to predecessors, highlight the activities that we have right here, click on the red X, select yes. And we see in the Gantt chart that our activities are now unlinked. And so what we can do, another method that we can use is our relationships um, boxes that we have at the bottom that shows our predecessors and our successors. And if you don't see this relationships tab at the bottom, just right click, customize activity details, and all of the columns will be available right here to choose from. So what we can do is we know that one is our starting activity and we need the successor to be activity two right here. So in our successors box that we see on the bottom right hand side, we can click assign. And so we select two. You can either double click it or press that um, green plus sign right there. And so we see that we have now linked one to activity two. And so what we can do to move through this is at the bottom, we have this go to button. If we click on that, Notice we are now highlighted on activity two. We can also see that we're in activity two right here. Our predecessor, so the activity before activity two is one, and we need to make our successor um, activity three. So in our successors box, click assign. We're going to select three by double clicking. We can leave this open, click on go to, and again, notice it takes us to the next one. So we're on three with our predecessor as two. We need to, we need to assign four as our successor. So we can double click, select go to. We need five, so double click, go to. We need six, go to. We need seven, go to. We need eight nine, and then finally 10. So when we look at that, we see that we have all of our activities linked. So again, we can press F9 or click on the icon at the top to schedule. And again, we see this nice um, waterfall pattern that we have of our activities pictured here in the Gantt chart. Um, this is sorted from start to finish. So these are just some of the ways that you can tie logic in P6. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more tutorials.